And then it's another edition here with the BB and Peter Show. And welcome to another exciting edition episode. And I'm here, as always, with the boring company of... Where's BB giggling always in my background? BB, where are you? You see, that just, I don't put the description of boring because I'm always the fun, happy, joking one. And you're the one, once again, who is introducing me as boring when it's not. Okay, first of all. And maybe you are, you're, you're persistent, yeah. BB. I would give you that. You're persistent. You, 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 have, you have faith. I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah, ask the listeners. You could ask the listeners who's the fun one. Like, without threatening their lives, right? Ask them for an honest answer who's the fun one, and you will hear. Anyway, well, secondly, the we'll second reason a... why I'm the fun one, I'm the fun I... one, is that I didn't want to do grammar today, and we're doing grammar because of you. I think we're going to settle this um, soon, BB, because we are uh -huh. close to 30 episodes. And I think that our last episode of this season will be right. a video cast. And oh my then God. we will show the listeners how we look oh, and then yeah, they will decide. Maybe we can even have maybe a live. Who knows that? Who knows? It's not a horror show, Peter. You're going to show everyone what you look like. Really, this is not <laughs> supposed to be a horror show. Baby, you you do great things with my with my ego. You just the best thing that I can have for my self esteem. Thank you so much for taking me to that place. I'm always honest, you know. Honesty is the best policy, you know. I see. Okay. So, Good on you. Yeah. Anyways, we have grammar on our lineup today, and um, we have uh, uh, received some awesome awesome feedback from our last grammar episode and we thought that we will give it another jab give it another shake give it another try give it another try uh, and uh, today we're going to go into we're going to sail the seas of two and four and the difference between two and four and prepositions is really right baby i mean you, you you're a teacher for a while now it's 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 it's, it's a tricky one isn't it it's a tricky one, but um, once you have a certain way to understand it, and once you break that barrier towards it, it's so simple to use it. It just comes naturally. Yeah. But you also got to, uh, I, I think we've discussed this before. It's like, don't look at it so grammatically. Um, don't focus on the grammar so much. Just think about it very, uh, like, almost visually. Yeah. It's like, how would you use it? day to day right because we're doing two and four and like i know you have like this amazing uh way just accept this compliment because you're not going to hear it in a very long time to come you have this Thank amazing you. way of explaining awesome. prepositions Thank right it's always out of the box right to not disappoint me today so take it away and explain to us the difference between two and four all right first the first thing that we need to understand um guys is um you know we have different kinds of preposition and i don't want to get really into the jargon because i think jargon really bores it and overcomplicates um you know um grammar but just a quick rundown oh, uh, two yep. Yep. yeah two is two is a preposition of movement so that just means that if you use two you depend on a verb so you will not be able to use two without the verb that is not the same for four uh, for is what we would okay. call more like a preposition of direction. You can use for without a verb. So I would say that's that's one stark difference. Um, and just to the listener, do not confuse uh, to the infinite. And the difference between using the to the infinite and to as a preposition is actually very easy. The to as an infinite you use before the verb. So you would use to go, to speak, to run, to think. To want to um, cook, if you are um, not 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 baby, she's not a good cook. Um, but um, oh, if you would, know. Those... you would know, yeah, okay. Let's continue. It. And if you would use the preposition preposition to uh, as a, oh, uh, you would use it after the verb, after the verb. Like so what? I am an example. Going, going to the beach. Right. So it's going to. Just make sure that's the that's the great difference between the infinite, where two is before the verb, and the preposition it's after. Okay, just to get the record straight, 
because I know that many of you guys, you kind of like, you know, because two have, they it has these two functions. So you're like, uh, uh, we're, we're, and why, why is, why is two used before the verb and then after? Okay. It's just infinite and preposition. Okay. Don't beat yourself up about that. It's not a big deal. Uh, right? I think it's the more you practice it as well. And the more you hear people using it, uh, it comes a bit more simple as well. So like Peter said, don't overthink it. Just use it as naturally as possible. Yeah. And then it all falls into place. But so let's do another example. If I say, um, give this pen to her, that's the prepositions basically moving, right? That's exactly. So can't... give this pen to her. Okay. So give yeah. this the verb. Okay. Right. And uh, that means that um, because it's movement, that means that the pen is moving, okay. right? Right. So um, the pen is moving, obviously, either from your hand to another hand, uh -huh. from one place to the hand. Um, so the key word here with the preposition to is movement, okay? Or I, or I like to use the word distance. So when you use the preposition to, there's always a distance that needs to be crossed, okay? Um, okay. Going to the other side. So, you know, it's distance. There is a, a distance between you and the other side, or there's a distance between A, point A and B. Uh, okay, and that's so when you, you use... I take that into exact example, and I say, um, this pen, right, is for her. Right. So in this, in this case, uh, if you say that the pen is for her, you're attaining purpose and reason. Um, so not necessarily pen is moving so the pen can be stationary on the table uh, okay. or wherever it is and you're just attaining the purpose the function or the reason for that pen reason, that pen yeah. so that pen is for writing reason. yeah yeah but you don't have to use English for work that's a reason yeah, yeah. right yeah that's a purpose behind the purpose behind of you learning exactly okay now no now there's there is a there is a place where these two prepositions do kind of overlap, okay? Oh dear, uh, and that's where the confusion comes. I knew you said to make it complicated. Let's see. Okay. Well, well, it's not it's <laughs> not that it complicated. Chance. It does make okay. sense. I mean, if you when you when you start, or well, when we used to write letters, and then I'm speaking about snail mail. That's when um, BB Long was still. My time. Yes. Long before yeah. my time, because we know you from the time of the dinosaurs. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you would always anyway. You would always write Maybe. on the envelope. You would always write on the envelope <laughs> to someone, or it can either okay. write for someone, right? Right. Exactly. So, so, okay. so the reason why is because you can either say that this letter, the purpose of this letter. Right, the reason, or the reason, the reason. Yeah. or okay. you can attain it to the movement. This letter is moving to that address, so that's why they can be used interchangeably. Um, to let's say to my love, which means that this letter will be posted, will be, you know, uh, moved physically to my love if she's in another country, another place, or for my love which refers to that this letter, the contents of this letter, she's the reason, right? So that's why it can be either two or four. Okay, so that's where it interchangeably, like, kind of overlaps when you can say both. Exactly, uh, exactly. Together. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But, okay, l let's wrap it up. I don't want it to be a boring grammar lesson. Let's wrap it up. Give us another example of two and four. And the great difference okay. Um, so we are sitting around the Christmas tree, you know, and it's the, um, Eve of Christmas and we are not allowed to open up the presents yet. And obviously you go to each and every present as a child and you obviously go to the biggest one first to make sure that your name is on that gift. Uh -huh. So your name being on the gift, um, you would kind of go to your mother and you would say, is that gift for me? Meaning that you're referring to the purpose, the reason of that gift, but you're not allowed to open the gift or the gift will well, not. Say, who is that gift for? Who is that exactly. gift for? Right? But, they, but, the gift, yeah. but the gift will not will not move or will not change places yet because it's not time to open up gifts yet. Okay. Okay. So when the time comes and 
the whole family is um, around the Christmas tree, and you know, and, and and they're celebrating Christmas, and it's time to open the gifts, and they're having gift uh, exchange. Uh, then we will use the preposition to because now, um, all right. So this is I would like to give this to you, referring to a movement where now the present from under the tree will move into the hands of the recipient. Yeah. And then we use... Okay, so... And I'd say I'd like to give this gift to you uh, for being such a great kid this year, right? Well, Peter never ever got told that because he was a really troublesome child from what his mom says. So really? that's why he's using that example, right? My mom says he's that. trying to yes, he's trying to recreate uh, the Christmas presents that he did not get. Yeah, <laughs> the reason that he was never good before, right? So, <laughs> so uh, the reason for that it was his behavior. See, reason for. So you can also say it in a sentence. The reason for you not getting a present is your behavior, right? Good. Good. That's it. That is it, baby. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. I understand two and four. A bit better. You were a bit more boring than the last grammar, but I'll give it to you. It was a bit complex to explain, and you did a very good job at it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the wrap, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will bring you more grammar rules and Hopefully not grammar. Oh, come on, please, Peter. Can we stop? With the oh, that's that's what the lessons the listeners are the listeners are asking for it. So we will give it to them. That's why we're here yeah. for the listener. Okay. All right. If you say so. Well, that's a wrap from us. I hope you enjoyed this two and four. And if you have any questions or queries, drop us in the comments below. And uh, yeah, give. Give Peter some work, yeah? Question him about your queries about twin. Let's see if he can uh, rise to the challenge. So don't be afraid to contact us if you have any questions. Right. Bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> Bye. But all the best. Bye, my guys. Peace out. Be good.